I just can't imagine being able to make some of these decisions, uh, high level decisions, uh, on the with my partner and, and have the same level of confidence um, that uh, I've got after being able to talk to these you guys and getting getting all this great feedback. So um, this is from a vendor of ours, actually, who uh, is also an MSP. Um, he has decided that he's going to focus exclusively on his non-MSP side of the of the business. Um, uh, and, uh, some of these clients he's had around for a long, long time, like that uh, that twenty four hundred one he's had since like two thousand nine. Um, he says, yeah, they're they're very, very. These are all very happy clients. And and introduce you to the client, make the client comfortable. With one of the things he was actually initially even talking about do, do, doing it initially was for like the first year, basically saying, hey, I brought on these guys to help me and my company service you better. Um, so uh, as far as the clients are concerned, we, we're they're still with the same company, just that there's some new faces is helping oh, out. And then when it comes up, uh, you know, maybe a year after that or something like that, hey, I'm, I'm turning things more directly with them. So it's, it's kind of a graded sort of transition where it's not sort of like a, hey, these guys are taking over. Kind of thing. Right, that's what I was concerned about because sometimes yeah. people feel like, well, if that's happening anyway, then I'm just gonna go. Right, right, know. if I'm gonna change, I'm gonna pick away. So is he gonna change. continue billing for the first? We haven't talked about that portion of it. Um, I would imagine not. Um, so that might be um, a little bit of a flying ointment of that plan. But I think that's is that conversation for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's ways to spin that, and you know, hey, they're, they're still assisting me, but I'm going to have them uh, handle some of the invoicing. Right. I mean, I they're think direct billing because we're not marking it up. I mean, there's ways to say, sure. but it does change. Yeah, and you, and you it does change the conversation. And you can say it's saving costs, and you know, this is our way to be more efficient in our act up. Yeah. Operations. Uh, Steve came back with a suggest uh, suggesting something more like um, ten to fifteen percent um, of the gross over a three year period um, for both the all you can eat and for the break fix work. Um, I'm not as concerned about the break the break fix work um, because uh, I mean it's not under any kind of an agreement or anything like that. And, and who, who knows? He did provide. Um, uh, billing history and uh, the uh, the average. Uh, well, yeah, here he's got the average, but he's he's also provided the actual billing history. So those numbers are pretty accurate. So for the the, the length of time that he's been working with them, um, that's how much they've been billing. Um, so uh, he got that. And he he sat on it and talked to some people for a bit. Went back and forth on some stuff, and he came back with um, the current uh, proposal from his side, which is. Um, I guess he, he says it is a peer group. Okay. Um, so now where he's at is uh, 40k lump sum, uh, which he says works out to about 25% of uh, 24 months of the recurring revenues. So I'm talking to my business partner and I'm thinking that we're going to counter with maybe a 30k lump, um, which if we're making 6k a month, I mean that pays off pretty darn quick. Um, go from there. Okay. So when, the one piece you're leaving out of that is that you're 100% responsible for retention in that. We're not. Um, so in that, um, That's not one, sorry, uh, one of the caveats of the, uh, we're, we're going to have a caveat in there about of that 30K, he gets 20 up front and another 10K after a year of retention uh, for them. Okay. Sorry. Things have been, uh, last month or so, we really got stuff a lot more dialed in in terms of efficiency. Um, and having some of the more right people in the right places. So we actually, we have spare bandwidth right now that I think we might, we'd be able to do this. Um, have you seen any of their tickets, like their, their ticket analysis of you know, how many tickets does this client generate? What yeah, type of he did provide that. Oh, good. So so it's nothing bizarre or nothing that you go, holy cow. No, actually, these are pretty quiet clients for the most part. Oh, good. Like, yeah. good. Question. So most of what's in here is commoditized services, right? It's, uh, you got a lot of monitoring, a lot of BDR type stuff. How many of these clients have been with him for more than three years? Yeah, well, let's see. The, 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 the so the up top there, there, that start date. Okay. So, so most of them have been a long time. And that's their very first date, not, not, the, not the current contract started. Uh, and this is when did they become a client to them? To the other, to the other company? He's, he, they they started with a contractor. So that's the contract start date. Is okay. So the reason the reason I ask that is with commoditized services, they say we have a life cycle. We're sticking with an MSP or an IT service provider.
right at the top of the doors. They're not going to think that you know, the, the other guy is bring, bringing you guys in for no reason. I mean, the reason is he's eventually going to leave, and now we've got these new guys. Let's shop around and see if there's something else out there. At 30K, is it, is it worth doing the deal? Yeah. yeah, I like it better with, with the way Chris can flip, flip the uh, hands around. And also, still, still flipping it, I want to make sure it's clarified that 80% is revenue, not count. Mm -hmm. Count the P and agreement, say you lose 24, right. so 93%. Yeah. 80, oh, 80%. Yeah, just kind of do whatever percentage. It's still there. Is, exactly. Yeah, use that percentage as how much you're going to get of the 20. Right. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Either, like, let's assume, just devil's advocate, that you tell them, hey, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't think this is actually going to work for us. And... He either finds someone else other than you to take it over, and then th those clients come to you anyway because well, they know they, they know them. about you. Well, well what if, if they're going to shop, like we're saying, one of the dangers is they're going to shop. So let's assume you say, hey, you know what, this isn't going to work for us right now. Mm -hmm. So then he makes a deal with some other MSP. Like so me. now me. they're oh, yeah, like there we go. So now they're working with Chris's company, <clears> and. But the same thing occurs to them. Wait a minute, he's handing us off to Chris. We're going to make a change. Let's just, you know, look this over. And they start looking, they could still end up with you. That's a possibility. You know what I mean? And so I, I don't know. I just don't know that it's. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, uh, the value I wouldn't doesn't seem. And again, I'm not, I don't even know this guy, so I'm not, I'm not saying he's doing something underhanded. I just don't know that it's worth what it's going to do to your cash flow and, yeah. and your debt load. For better word, when we onboard. Our new clients, they all get, they all drink the Kool Aid. They all get their stuff set up the way we set stuff up. Everything is consistent. So when we hire new engineers, we train them in how we do things, and they can go to any of our clients. Right, right. If they don't have that standardization, then you could be walking into, a, you know, a hornet's nest where, you know, this guy that's two hundred ninety-seven dollars a month, right. but he liked the way he had it set up and he didn't want to do what he, what this other man wanted to do. So now you've got to, A, figure it out. That was one and of the- And deal with it. That was just not enough here to really put any money at risk. You wouldn't be talking yeah. about it if there was more value. Yeah. You wouldn't be- If there was more value, he would have sold it to someone else already. Or, or, or you'd have already pulled the trigger because it would have been a no-brainer. Yeah. Or it would have been included in the previous deal he already yeah, did. Yeah, that's what, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That all makes sense. He sold it to someone that, that was sophisticated enough to look at this and say, these aren't worth it. Right? At any cost. <laughs> <laughs>